So, um, as I said, as a intro to the to the class is that this is going to be a Q and A mostly, um, and then that way you guys have till Tuesday to kind of work on the things that you guys want to work on to try to to make your lives a little bit easier, give you a little bit more time. But anyway, with that being said, though, with that being said, does anyone have a question? I'm sure y'all do. Uh, I've got a couple. You're only allowed yeah. one. Sure. Um, I JP get this question. But I will allow it. I'll allow you to ask more than one. Today Sweet. I'm feeling generous. Awesome. Um, so I think one of them is like specific to lighting, I guess. And then the other one is yeah, more so. about... And then, so the first one is like, how often... Like, is this something you grew out of or is this something that's always been a part of the process? Like, how often do you have to readjust your values after you've started painting in uh, like your, your lights and shadow? I find that like when I'm, when I'm uh, like addressing light and shadow in my paintings right now, I find that it like changes the graphic read. Cause like once you put the highlights and the shadows in the, it, it changes the, <clears throat> the general value of it almost so how often you have to go back and like fix that so it reads the same way just with light um yeah it just probably means uh, a couple things could be going on one you could be you're not lighting appropriately that's one of them you might be overexposing things uh and two you might be um uh, or a second thing that could happen is that you are lighting everything correctly, but maybe your graphic read was too intense. Oh, okay. Uh, or sorry, not not intense enough. Oh, sorry, that's the opposite of what I meant. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so if you look here, like let's let's go ahead and design a thing. So if I go and do this and blank, like sit in these graphic reads. And let's just say he has like a dark underbite. And he's got these dark eyebrows. <clears throat> to me, this is this is totally fine. And then like when I start to add in lighting, you can see that it maintains the graphic read. Mm -hmm. But that's because I'm not overexposing the lighting. See that? Oh, okay. So that's what I mean, like it could be you're overexposing it. All right. Usually. Yeah, sense. yeah. Yeah. So you mean you or mean your graphic read is uh, I can just show you in 3D. Oh, okay. Sure. When I say overexposed, I mean, I, I actually mean overexposed. Like, so if we had, do, 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 ba, ba. Um, Say that. Okay, so we have this object that has all these different local values. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's actually. Do this so we get it going across every angle, right? Yep. So that looks 
Uh, that looks uh, that looks accurate, right? But that's because the light is not being overly exposed. But you can add another light, but that still feels pretty accurate. It just feels like there's two lights, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> but if we go to color management here, and here's the exposure, and we just crank that up, that's overexposing. Right? right yeah. And that's like putting your lights too bright, but then mm -hmm. there's also underexposed, which is making everything too dark. Too dark. But if you don't overexpose in either direction, it should look fine. Okay. It's kind of like what I was doing in my own painting. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, I'm not committing to a very dark shadow and a very light light. Okay. I'm going right in the middle. And that usually tends to look a little more naturalistic. Okay. And I guess that 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 like goes for like specific objects too. Like if I was painting a piece of armor that was like a, a mid tone gray, I don't want to, I don't want to make the highlight too light relative to that color gray, and then yeah, yeah. too dark, right? Okay. Yeah, you get it. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I'm not saying that you shouldn't ever overexpose. I'm saying that's what you're getting. This is the problem you're running into. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think for dramatic effect, you can totally overexpose. You could totally like make a rim light super bright, you know, and that could overwhelm all of the values, right? It basically unifies them. But if you do it in a good way, it actually adds a lot more dimensionality and drama to your uh, your shot. Mm -hmm. Cool. Makes sense. Oh, dude. I'm all about making sense. <laughs> you said you had a few questions? Was it you that said yeah. you had? Yeah. What was your other yeah. one since you're here? So uh, let's go ahead and yeah, this, knock them out. This one, this one's kind of quick. It's a, so when you're like building your portfolio, how uh -huh. important, how important is creating a set of characters and concepts that kind of exist in the same universe together based on like a narrative that you've created versus like a wide range of work that doesn't necessarily connect but it shows variety like what's what would be more important as far as like showing your abilities uh just uh, your ability to come up with ideas uh visually so it doesn't mean like you should come up with your own original ideas entirely. It can just mean you maybe do a lot of redesigns of characters that exist already. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could be that. So it's literally just be like fan art, uh, mm -hmm. but not like the kind of fan art that's like, like you're thinking about Pikachu, you just draw Pikachu as Pikachu. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about yeah. like, like you imagine Pikachu if he was in Transformers, like if he was a robot. Like what would that look like? That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like a that's a good example of like being a concept artist because that's what if that was the thing. Like that's like a <clears throat> that's like kind of what you would do, right? Like if you work for an IP that already existed, you would and they were, are rebranding it. Like what if they were to let's say make uh, a uh, a live action movie of Pokemon, not like the Detective Pikachu one. I'm saying like the like a live action film, or or I guess that's been a good example because they already kind of did this right. And but it is a good example because we can look at that and see how they reinterpreted those. But a better example would be kind of like a live action Sonic and how they did that right. They were where they redesigned it a bit, you know. Um, like I've always been a fan of Mega Man, for instance. And I always thought, you know, if they were to ever make a Mega Man movie, that'd be cool. But I would prefer if it was animation. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think animation is the way to go. But <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. Like I think it's really, um, yeah, it's just a matter of, uh, oh, you know what? 
it's a matter of like you know demonstrating your ability to be creative okay you know yeah and and do it consecutively right like if somebody asks you to do more designs you should, can you do it right yeah if you can't then maybe you need to reevaluate right mm. <clears throat> Ooh, makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, but I would say focus on just quality. It's like the biggest, biggest thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Let's do it. On a roll. Now y'all are tight already. All right. No, I'm doing... I had a question. I just don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. It just automatically applied the texture, and I didn't even plug it in. How does it know? I didn't even plug hey, it. Uh, I, th I think I have a question. <clears throat> what the? Yeah, and it's like already... What the? That was weird. Uh, is, is someone else going first? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Oh, no, no, go, go, go ahead. Mauricio. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, oh, hey, Anthony, I just would like to ask you what are the anatomy books that you, rec you, you would recommend for us? Um, anatomy books, I think for me, um, one of like the best, uh, anatomy books that I could recommend is all of them. <laughs> Just get them all. Uh, probably the, the, the best one I, I ever really, um, got a lot out of, like, I don't think anyone can ever get. It's, it was done by an artist who passed away too young. Um, oh my God, I already forget his name. That's said. I know who this person is. He's one of my favorite artists. But he he built like this very small art book uh, of anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, but it was very small and it was very short. Um, but one of my favorite sources of anatomy, actually, ironically, is... Um, uh what you call it uh comic book art mm -hmm. yeah because i think a lot, a lot of people spend their time focused on like these big anatomy books and i think those are really good you know especially when you're first starting out and you're just trying to like um learn you know what i mean uh -huh. um you just get a bunch of like comic book art and just study like the way that these comic book artists have interpreted anatomy you know and you'll find that it's like super super helpful because it's yes. like it's really well it's really well structured it's, it's very exaggerated you know it's very visible you know mm -hmm. uh, and then you accompany that with like a book like uh, anatomy for artists or something along those lines, you know, then you're, you're off to the races, you know, you're, you're on uh -huh. the right track. Do you uh, have some, some influence I, from Bridgman? Yeah, but I, I like, I was going to get to it, like, but I like, that's the thing. I like, look at all of these different, these different books. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I had uh, nearly 16 to 17 anatomy books. And I used all of them, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like my, my overall impression when it comes to this type of stuff is just like. When you, when you build a structure for a human character, for example, Anthony, do you think of alternating round shapes and straight straight shapes, uh, square shapes, 
consciously, at, at least in the in the beginning, when you were first attempting. I'm sorry. Say the last part again, or say say all all that again. Actually, do, so when remember. you when you build a, a human anatomy structure. Do you uh -huh. think do you think about uh, alternating square shapes with circular shapes? Do you think there is some kind of natural balance that comes to it? Yeah. So whenever I draw uh, characters uh, with anatomy, like I, I just listen to the people who've been doing it for years, and a lot of what you'll find is. Uh, we, what we talked about a lot yes, uh, yesterday, which is simplest, uh, simplicity. So there will be like uh, ideas of like the beanbag anatomy body. There's like the, you know, Bridgman approach, which by the way, he was like a drunk. Some of his drawings were really bad uh, where he would like draw two left feet, right? He would draw like a left foot on a on uh, what you call it, you draw two left feet, you draw a left foot on the right leg, <laughs> you oh know. Um, so if you weren't paying attention, you'd get got by that kind of stuff, you know. But <clears throat> the moral of what I'm trying to get at, though, is that like, there has been anatomy studies for, for quite a long time. And if you just start studying all of it, you know, um, and every bit of it, that's kind of the strategy that I put into place. Uh, I also, when I'm, uh, and I also like took from those things, the simplicity, right? Like that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, I just was like, okay, there's a reason why they keep making it simple, <laughs> you know? And I just need to kind of understand why. And the reason is because, you know, it goes back to like, you don't need all of that information, you know, like it's not necessary to know every little bit of anatomy. You just need to know enough, you know what I mean? And what would happen uh, a lot of times I would have friends who would just like study anatomy, but they would like learn every nuance, every little piece of bone and vascular like vein in the human body right when in reality all, all you really need to do is just have clarity you know about what's actually there so i usually i focus on simplicity so some of the simple things that i focused on was to show muscles like muscles that bodybuilders only think about you know uh, that's all I cared about uh, at the time. You know what I mean? And then uh, I'll just get really good at that. And that's what, again, that's, that's what led me to um, uh, looking at uh, what you call it. Um, that's what made me look at like comic book art. Because these comic book artists, I like, just figured it out, <laughs> you know? And it goes back to like, why fix something that ain't broke kind of approach. Uh, and when it happened is when I had these 17 anatomy books and I studied from all of them, I was just looking for patterns, you know? And the patterns that I found were uh, focused on proportion. Proportion's a big deal. So I made proportion my life's goal, okay? They focused in on... Um, what else was like a big one? They focused in on, uh, oh yeah, just like, just generalities, like gesture, you know, getting really good gesture was important. You know, if you were to get your anatomy right, you need to make sure you have some good gesture, you know? Mm -hmm. That was really important. Um, another one was, uh, making sure you understood the forms of your anatomy. This is something that we've talked about quite a bit in this class, right? When um, you when you say good gesture, you mean uh, good as pronounced flows? 
flows uh, in, in the format of asses. I'm sorry, say, say that again. I'm not sure if I'm understanding what you're saying. You, you, when you mean good, good gesture, uh, having a good gesture in your drawing, do you mean having a, a, a good pronounced S shape? Like a S shape, you mean? Yeah, in the, in, oh, okay. in the format of the letter. No, your uh, your accent made it sound like you were saying ass. And I was like, what? Why does he <laughs> keep saying ass? <laughs> I but, was right there on board with you. I, but I, I didn't want to say anything, so I wanted you to repeat it so I can like be sure I wasn't hearing things. And you're like, it would have been funny if you're like, no, I mean it, ass shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. It's like it's really important to me and my countrymen in here in Brazil. Like all that's all we care about is ass shapes. Like, oh, okay. That's actually that a boring. fact. In the in the U.S., you are more like brass kind of people, and we are more like more about the ass. Yeah, so I guess you were right. Um, I forget how to do. Oh God. Um, Bring back this conversation about Mauricio being president of Brazil. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm actually trying to get this man a medal. <laughs> oh, thank uh, God this is recorded. Affecting <laughs> the uh, affecting. Um. Yes, the C curve, the S curve, uh, and straight lines. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that. I think that that's like one of the biggest things. That uh, I I I've come to learn that people aren't. Um, just doing enough of, which is just studying the basics, you know? And for me, uh, that was just like, yeah, that's just it. I just was f focusing on that. I mean, it's it's never ending, you know? I, I've, I've made this point as many times as possible, but it's like, it's never ending, right? Like it's just simple, it's just a matter of execution, you know? People just don't, feel like they should execute you know mm -hmm. and for me uh that's once i realized that uh specifically that just people just don't bother to try to get good at stuff you know then yeah. i i just it's like well i'm going to try <laughs> you know and sure enough, uh, I was right about it. Well, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I won't say no more, but uh, I, I just would like to say one more thing for, before uh, have, having the, the time for, for someone else to ask you a question. It's just that I, I really would like you to, to say more about the kind of exercises that you, that you went through when you were first attempting, but because your I, I have I have seen interviews from you and and watched some some of uh, of your videos talking about your trajectory and uh -huh. it amazes me that in 2007 you were doing those Mario Brothers uh, kind of uh, concept realistic concepts but it, but in a few years from from that, like in two, seven years later, in 2014, you were doing some amazing concepts uh, really ahead of, of that. And I, I really think you, you should have a routine of exercises. And I, and I kind of uh, wanted you to t talk a little bit about that more. B maybe that period uh, can relate to us more. Uh, which kind of exercises that you took because it's uh, very clear that that you had a, a really disciplined routine in that in that time. Yeah, so um, 
That's that's what I've been telling you. I've actually been telling you this. I I literally have been telling you what I what I did. The problem though, Mauricio, is you think that there's something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I've I've very literally have been telling you what I've been doing or what I've done. You know? Which is I just studied. I just studied a lot. You know what I mean? And um, it's hard to believe that there was no like agenda, but you got to believe me, there wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I didn't have like a thing. Like, here, let me put it to you this way. Mm-hmm. When I was doing those Mario Brother things that you really thought were cool, right? Um, oh, no wonder. Oh. Aha, uh-huh. I don't have merge vertices. Okay, uh, now that should be working. Um, hold on. There you go. I forgot to turn that on. Um, yeah, so this, this idea um, that I had things figured out, right? Or I had some sort of this process that uh, if you only knew what it was then and only then, will you, can you truly begin your journey? You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, I've been trying to say it like, no, it's, it's, it was very literally uh, the fact that I just, I didn't have any idea what I was doing, you know? And it was a trial by fire situation for me, you know, very much so. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, just fucking up, dude, (laughs) you know? And what I'm trying to uh, convey here is that when I was making these uh, mistakes, I was learning a lot about what it meant to be a, oh, you know, I, I truly messed this up. Hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. There you go. There's some funky, there is some funky, funky looking geometry here. But this should be good. Like the the reality, oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> I know. The the reality was that I, I was like learning as I was going, you know? Like it just was. Like I um what let me like so let me give you the example I was leading into before I got distracted with this thing. Um so when I was like doing those Mario paintings, right? Uh, I didn't know like why those would would help me out in the long term of my whole my general career you understand like i didn't know i just did them because i was a fan of mario you know what i mean and and then i remember i i was like down on my luck i just like lost my job and so i was just like i need to like get more exposure and i just tried it but it wasn't like all right i'm going to do this and it's going to work you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know. I had no clue. Uh, a lot of what you hear me talk about, especially in those types of interviews, is a lot of hindsight. Not a lot of foresight. Right? Um, like, I didn't, I had no clue. I would go to places with portfolio reviews and they would be like, you need to work on your anatomy. And I was like, got it. And then I would not work on it. And then another group of people would be like you need to work on your anatomy and i was like got it and i wouldn't work on it and then one of my favorite artists was like yeah you just need to work on your anatomy like your anatomy is like hot garbage and i was just like i guess there's something to this anatomy stuff you know <laughs> and so then i started doing it and sure enough they were right everybody that ever told me that uh was absolutely right you know and kind of what I'm trying to get across here 
uh, is that like when I was doing all that stuff, like mistakes uh, and things that were not mistakes over those many years, right? Uh, I learned I learned a quite a lot about myself and what it takes to to become a concept artist. I don't think this method was a good method. I'm trying to like see if I can project the my textures. I think what I need to do is much. I need to start much much simpler. Can't just do a perfect trace. It's cool though. It's cool to see it sort of come by. Um, do you understand what I'm getting at? Like, I didn't like have like a, okay, I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do this. And clearly it's going to lead me to the path of glory. You know, I was just as naive and just as lost as you guys, but the difference is, and I, and this is me looking back and it's like, okay, so, but what did I do though? Cause people ask me this question all the time, right? It's like, what, what did I do that made me overcome my uncertainty? Because that's pretty much what I'm trying to get at. Is like I wasn't certain, right? Uh, and I tell people, oh, it was, it was that it was my diligence. Regardless of what I didn't know was going to happen, I did it anyway. You know what I mean? Oh wait, there's probably a better way of doing all this. I just realized I'm a fool. I don't know if I can go back in time. Oh man, I am a fool. Hey, let's try this again. You were constantly checking out you, what you what you did last and uh, analyzing uh, your coldly from a from an outside point of view your mistakes. Right? It's a, it's a constant uh, checking. Yeah. And, let me and... let me show you an example. Since I'm already in 3D, let me actually do it in 3D. I did this for the morning class. I'm not sure if you saw this, but I'll do it again. It's a great, great way of explaining. Um, and usually I do this in 2D, but I found that doing it in 3D is a lot of more fun. Uh -huh. Oh. So let's say this yellow ball uh, is me. I just realized there's Do -do -do. okay. All right. So this yellow ball is me. Okay. And then this, this spotlight Okay. So let's imagine that this, this yellow ball is the starting location. The spotlight is the visible knowledge that I have uh, in front of me, okay? And everything in gray is like the fog of war, okay? Or in this case, the fog of excellence. So what you're asking me is like, like what's the path that in which you took it, take, uh, taken AJ, that's led you to, let's say my goal uh, being, let's say, over there. And then the size of this, and this, this, this sphere is correlates to my success. And it's holy very, shit, Mark. Oh, what? I saw Lord Zeus. I heard someone say, holy shit. What? My bad. What are you talking about what's going on? Anyway. <laughs> so, 
so like you know that's kind of how you see it right you're like off in the distance you're like ah that is the excellence you know which i want to obtain right and it's like what was the path in which you've taken and i'm saying uh i'm saying uh i don't know i didn't take a there was not a direct path if you're asking me how i actually got there right like did i know exactly what worked and what didn't work and i just followed followed through you know it was the fact that i didn't know right so like I would go this way and then I would learn something. But it was like a negative experience, right? Like maybe I didn't paint something good. And I go this way and I'm like, oh no, I get another negative experience. And I painted this way and I'm like, this was actually was pretty positive. I learned something, you know? And then I went this way. Actually, let's connect this. And then I'm like, I went this way, but then this made me feel like it was a negative experience. And then I went this way, negative experience. Say it was positive experience. You know? Your artistic journey was more like playing Minesweeper. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, Like eventually I just kept on going and going and going and going, you know? And just became more and more like this. Not sure why. Those lights aren't working. Maybe you're running out of RAM. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just like, why isn't these lights working? But. Okay, I got you. But this is what I see, okay? Right? I see this. This is what I feel like. Oh, I remember when I went to this event, I learned that from that great artist. Or I remember when I did this and I lost all my work. Oh, I remember when I made that mistake uh, when I was studying. Oh, I remember when I made this attempt and that was good to say that there was like a clear path to this isn't the wrong idea you know what i mean because what it really is more like is this all collectively is who i am right and it's all within this it's not like a a world where i'm going towards it is the collection of successes and mistakes right mm -hmm. And so then when you're like, well, which, which is the best I'm saying study, because you're going to make a mistake, but that making that mistake, you, you would have learned something. It's not negative. It's actually a positive reinforcement. You've already, it's already happened to you in the class. You've made mistakes, right? And you learn from them. I'm sure you could think of a lot of examples in your life that that's happened. And uh, just to kind of cap this analogy, some more. Uh, I was once asked if I can go back in time and change, like talk to my past self and tell them something, you know, like to give them advice, something that I, I, I know now that I wish I could have told them then type of situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, um, oh my gosh, where's the, Oh, it's right here. Okay. <clears throat> you would just let a li little Anthony go. Yeah, I wouldn't say anything to him. You got it. Right? That's exactly the point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's because of the things that I learned. It's why I'm the, the, the artist I am today. You know? I've made some huge mistakes in my life. And I still would be, I'm still cool with it. You know what I mean? Okay. And so um, in terms of like my exact path, there, there really isn't one. But what I did was just stay diligent. I just painted every day. And the way that I studied, this is something that I'm telling you, like this is the thing that uh, the foresight that I can tell you that will work in the long term, which is study 
the things you do not know aggressively, okay? If you do not have a good handle of anatomy, then all you should be focused on right now is anatomy. Just get your head in the books. Just study anatomy. Just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then draw and make those mistakes. Uh, test yourself often. Do like 10-minute, 15-minute like tests of your knowledge and see how much of it uh, sticks. You know? Okay. That's a good uh, that's a good piece of studying that I, I didn't know I learned the hard way. Okay. Yeah. Thank but like you, I said, I wouldn't tell the future my past self this because um because I don't know if that would have changed who I was. Like maybe that I wouldn't become a teacher, perhaps. Or I wouldn't be as good as a teacher because me making those mistakes taught me how to explain to others how to avoid those same mistakes, uh, specifically when it came to study. Okay, it's more about exposing, your, exposing yourself to the mistakes and uh, be open to, 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 to rearrange them, right? Yeah, absolutely. To mold yourself uh, b based on them. Yeah, and like I said, um, uh, like I've, I've been saying, you know, it's it's okay to like uh, it's okay to like make make mistakes, <laughs> you know, and it's okay to like to to just challenge yourself a little bit. Again, I think people get way too caught up, and oh no, what's happened? Oh no. I don't like that I did that. Uh, I might have to do this. Yeah, look at that. It's all weird. Um, yeah, see like right now I'm doing it. I'm doing the very thing that I t teaching you, which is I'm I'm trying something. I'm trying to see if I can make um, a compelling image. You know what I mean? And it's it's yeah. very hard. <laughs> you know, this very... is this is me. Yeah, Try, uh, trying to 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 make a good concept for your class. <laughs> yeah. But the difference in this scenario is that I'm learning. I tried one thing, it didn't work out. And I think I understand why it didn't work, but I don't know, I was gonna, maybe it's not, I don't completely write it off. There might be some, some value in doing it the way that I saw earlier, but right now I'm like, I'm like, okay, I need to like try something else. So I had like another idea, which is to essentially um, sculpt oh man it keeps like destroying it though <laughs> maybe I just do a simple subdivision let's do multi-res see what happens subdivide oh my god but I don't get it here, let's go here. Let's just do good old fashioned subdivide. Let's try this again, but this time, uh, we'll really get in there. But yeah, I'm like learning as I go. I'm trying to find a, a really good way to paint something and turn it into a 3D model. And right now this is just me just trying to do it on my own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my God, look at that. Gross. <laughs> Apology. <laughs> but whatever. Whatever. Okay, Anthony. Thank you, man. Thank you a lot. Yeah, but I what I will do though, um, once I get 
Um, oh, that's yeah. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Why is this so shiny though? It's like super shiny. <laughs> Why are you shiny, bro? Let's go to the materials. Let's look. Oh, the roughness is at zero. I was gonna. Yeah, I was about to say check the roughness to see if it's at zero. There you go. There we go. All right, let's go back to sculpt room. Um, I'll give you some, I'll still give you some tips on like how I thought about anatomy, but like I mentioned before, I, I spend a lot of time, well, that's pretty weird. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, studying Oh my god, this is a nightmare. All right, let's save that for another day. Oh, I will. I think there's another way that I can do it. Um, and it's the way that I didn't want to try, but I think I have to do it. Which is, uh, oh yeah, this actually is not a terrible idea at all. Why did I think that it would have been? It's probably the fastest. Oh, uh, I know why I didn't want to because it's like doing. Oh, wait, no, I could have done this in. Blender still. Whatever. Uh, but I'm going to do this some other time. But I, I just realized what I could have done is this. You know? And sculpt. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. This would have been a wiser choice. But now I know why. Ah. Ooh. yeah because what i can do here that's already i mean that's not perfect but like this will help me get there absolutely yeah okay let's say i made another mistake i started too detail oriented yeah let's actually try to follow this through let's follow this experiment through <laughs> all right i need to like follow my own advice Start basic. Get the basic stuff right. Don't get ahead of yourself, AJ, you you doofus. If you need help with 3D, AJ, I'm your guy. I always need help. I doubt that. I do. I just talked about how I always make mistakes. I mean it. But, but you're uh, AJ, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, look at this. This is the ticket. I just need to have more practice in this. But this is like a great strategy. Uh, I, I think I can just do it better in um, Blender. No, maybe not. No, yeah, I can. Yeah, so those features are in the right spot. I just need to like actually sculpt it. But um, yeah, like whenever I, you know, want to learn something, I do what you see me doing now. I like put my best effort in, you know, and I just try to learn. Uh, I make no attempts to assume that I already know. I just try to, I just try to, learn and just try to make mistakes and then just see the result of it. I was like, why can't I pull this out? It's not going to be a perfect ear shape, but we need something right now. There's like nothing coming out. But this is what I do. I, I, and I do a lot of this, dude. I study so much when I was learning programming, same, same deal guys. Like I wasn't like I was sitting there. All right. This is exactly what I got to do. I need to learn this and that and that. No, I just was like, all right, what do I want to do? I want to make it so that a character can run across the screen. Got it. Do I know how to do that? No. Okay. Perfect. Where do I start? Well, this person says, you know, this is how you make a person run across your screen. All right. So, okay, let me do it. And then I'll do it. I'll follow their instruction to the T. And then I'll be very critical of their instruction and be like, is that the best way though? 
Like, I don't know. I mean, it works now, but I feel like I still don't have a lot of control over what happened here. So then I go online and look for another example. And then I go, uh, I find one, and then I'm like, that's great. But is that though? Or am I just like, you know, I'm having student bias where any new information is the law until <laughs> someone says otherwise, right? And so I just start, I just keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. I always say, think of it like uh, as like art as a science, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right? my, like, kind of my approach as well. Yeah, instead of thinking like, because the scientists are always on the frontier of knowledge, right? They're not all, they're not like, well, this is exactly how we should do it. In fact, usually the people who hold back some of the greatest minds are the people that think that way, right? The people who are like, well, that's not how we do it around here, you know? Like I remember when um, Einstein was like on the 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 cusp of like discovering relatively relativity, and a lot of his peers are just like you're a moron, you know. Like there's no way that's a thing, right? And he's like, bitches, it's totally a thing, <laughs> you know. And uh, and there's only like a few other like people at the time they were like, oh no, he's, he's definitely onto something. And it was there, it was like a race at that point, right? Um, there was this mathematician when he heard Einstein talk about it and everyone's like just scoffing. And he's just like, no, 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 that makes fucking a lot of sense, <laughs> you know? And, and then he was like, all right, I'm gonna like discover it first and be, I'm going to be the one that everyone remembers. And then when Einstein remember, heard that, he's like, what? No, what? And then he's like, all right, whatever. And he's like, no, I'm going to prove it through mathematics. And then Einstein's like, oh, hell, you're not. And so then Einstein beat him to that. But even then, people were like, whatever, dude. You guys are both dumb. <laughs> you know? He's like, you got to, like, prove it. And so then he was just like, all right, how can I prove it? Okay. Solar total total solar eclipse i think it's solar or lunar eclipse i forget which one he's like look the the, the light from the sun and the moon is going to is going to be distorted because of relativity right cuz the distance from the moon and the sun is different for, like is there's a there's a gap between that and to earth and that distance is enough for light to bend like its direction it's not going to go straight Cause it's going to slow down you know and they're like what that makes no sense he's like because you guys don't understand what i'm trying to explain to you but look at the math and now let's wait for an eclipse and then there was like i think three attempts right the first two were complete failures it was like a sunny or it was like a cloudy day or the, like there was rain or there's something wrong with the equipment and there was like something wrong that happened in both of those instances okay and Einstein, like the third attempt was like a big deal because Einstein was getting old, you know? And if he didn't get it then, then he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been alive to see it be proven right. Right. Uh, but luckily it, it worked on the third attempt. So he was like, booyah. Right. But he had like, he had gone through different processes to prove his point right? Different methods each time. You understand? And he is that diligence that drove him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was that diligence that really uh, drove him to do that. And unfortunately, he didn't live long enough to see that gravity is, is actually waves, right? But he also thought that that was a thing too. And, and again, people are like, you're nuts. But I think after relativity, people are like, maybe he's not that nuts. And to this day, people were trying to discover if he was right about gravity being waves, and they just did it recently. They just proved it, right? But it wasn't like Einstein had like a, a perfect method of how to do it. He had ideas of how to do it. He had some instructions, but it was the scientists of today who discovered the tools and invented the technology to actually generally test it. You know? Imagination is more important than knowledge. Yeah, and so if 
if you're thinking of like there's this routine strategy this is why i'm really pushing back on it i'm saying that you're then you might accidentally miss out on failing right and the lessons you learn from that in fact i think when you fail you the lessons stick much stronger than when you succeed you know sure sure so you, if you feel like you are lighting or doing your anatomy wrong for so long, but then you eventually like, I need to do it this way, or I need to try this, something else. And you put that initiative in your own hands and you accomplish your goal by learning something about it, right? That's going to stick longer and harder than uh, if anyone could have told you what you should have been doing, including me, right? Uh, I remember, uh, you know, uh, telling my children this like where i would say you know there's two ways of learning you can either learn it the easy way or you can learn it the hard way you know and the hard way is the the hand on the stove i tell you that the stove is hot but until you put your hand on the stove you know either take my word for it or you put your hand on the stove right and you find out <laughs> the the hard way and so what i'm saying is that um Sometimes if you if you're not taking my word for it, like I'm telling you, study, 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 and just be diligent and just like study your most immediate flaws, right? That's essentially what I'm getting at, right? And you're just still not convinced. At some point, you will be just out of out of necessity, right? Because it will just happen intuitively, inevitably. Like it did with me. Like the anatomy example I told you, where tons of people were telling me, yeah, you got to study your anatomy, you got to study your anatomy. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Like, what do you guys know? <laughs> These amazing artists. Uh, and when you get there, you'll be in on the, cl you'll be in on the joke, I always like to say. And that just means like, you now are like, oh yeah, like it's totally just this. It, it was always just very simple. Okay. It's just that it's hard right now, dude. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Like you're just—it's just that part was true for me too. And it was not easy for me, and I didn't have all the answers. Uh, I would go to events. I took classes. You know, I did all of the stuff I needed to do. Yeah, anyway, any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, of course. Uh, I've got another portfolio one if no one's chiming in. Let's do it. So um, it, I guess it's a matter of presentation. Um, uh, so as of right now, some of our designs are just kind of sitting in a vacuum of, you know, plain white background or play plain gray background. Yeah. Um, is it totally. important to have any, uh, like lighting or environmental context or can, oh, no, can the concepts really just completely stand on their own? They can totally stand on their own. Cool. Um, I am not here to say that it doesn't help sure it totally helps but it's also one of those things like but it better be good right that you're willing to present it if if there's nothing there then it's okay <laughs> there's nothing to scrutinize you sure know what I mean? oh uh, okay okay like you, it's actually it could actually have a negative consequence if it's not uh good you know what i mean mm-hmm um so I usually tell people just don't even bother. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to, to have something uh, But abstract. only if you can execute on it. Yeah, it doesn't hurt if it's abstract, but it definitely hurts uh, uh, like if it's really bad, you know? Sure. So I typically tell people just focus on making your actual content of value not so much the uh what you call it 
like make the content of value don't don't worry about like backgrounds and all stuff even when it comes to like borders and email like just keep it super simple dude just make it very basic just showcase the actual quality concept sure and that'll work really well i mean um let me show you an example yeah i i would really appreciate that there's a uh, what i'm trying to do lately is compare my work to the artists that i admire and mm -hmm. just um a lot of them have a lot of context and i actually saw the artist in question one of their works right there in one of your folders yeah sure but like this, would you say, ah, oh, man, this is gross, this concept. Like, if only I had Absolutely a background. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, which artists were you thinking about? Hold on, let me refresh. Um, I am a big, big fan of Wei Wang. Oh, Wang Wei. Oh, Wei. Him? Oh, that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Yeah. Or I guess yeah. he goes by I'm Wei Wang. I call him okay. Wing he goes by Wei Wing. Yes, but like, I'm uh, a look at this. Huge fan of Wei Wing. This is not. This is not in any real background. I mean, there's like a ground, but I think that's again, it's unnecessary. Right? He has definitely illustrations, but that's not the same as a concept. You understand me? Right. Like, there is no background to these portraits. There was one on this one. And there's kind of one on this that has like wolves. Right? But not really. Like if those wolves aren't there, I'm like, ah, oh, well, then this is garbage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Uh, but then when you look at like, yeah, his illustration work, he's definitely putting them in like backgrounds, but that's because it's a, it's a, an illustration. You know? Right. Right. These are, these are illustrations. These aren't concepts concepts are just this yeah like um i really like his uh his black hand concept Wait, hold on. that one's that one. got um so in my uh again like personally in my route of uh, portfolio development this this seems like a, a this stuff right here yes like yeah, i would but... consider well Oh, I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah, but even then, it's still very basic. It's very abstract, right? It's kind of like a film studio. This one's not, right? There's like skulls and stuff. But I think that's like unnecessary still, <laughs> because the movie doesn't have Black Hand walking on skulls. <laughs> so it's like pointless. Like, what was he doing? Like, there is not even context for the scene, you know? Sure. But yet he spent days doing this. It's because he's an illustrator primarily originally it was, it was an illustrator so it's built into him but i think he's learned as he was working on these and i was there when he was just just focus on the idea of the concepts because that's all i did you know mm -hmm. um but if you're asking if it's like like a big deal i don't think so but it definitely adds some spice especially if you do a good job so i wouldn't i'm not i'm not against it and I'm not for it. I don't really care for it. I think in terms of concept, art, environment, unless the character is somehow engaged in the environment, like maybe some sort of spider raising their nest of hatchlings and they crawl on her body, maybe I would illustrate a little bit of something, how, how that would actually work. Or something coming out of the walls, like some sort of creature. You know, then I'll be okay. I'll have to draw the wall in which this is coming out of, right? Right. But if it's just like a character, like a person, then I'm like, no, this, they're not going to just always be in this wor world that I'm putting them in. I remember I was working on uh, X Men and they wanted me to put backgrounds behind all the stuff so they could present it to the director. So it does happen. Right. But even then, like, we just all use the same background. <laughs> It wasn't oh, like sure. we all came up with like unique ones for every environment or every uh, design. We just had like one and we just stuck to it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. 
So it's up to you, man. I, I, I like I said, I don't want you to have the wrong impression here that like backgrounds are a must. I'm saying you can totally get away with never using them. Absolutely. Thank you. That very aptly answered my question. Yeah, man. I believe in you. Any other question. questions? Yeah, I have uh, questions. Yeah. Kind of like an addition to that. So I guess I'll use Fang Zhu as an example since people have talked about him before. But every nope. time I feel like I watch the a, guy. <laughs> every Wait, time I watch a, a video no. about him talking about getting into the industry, he always says that you kind of have to have a portfolio that shows your understanding of everything. But maybe uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he doesn't say that. Uh, but <laughs> It seems like you, you need character designs, environments, props, and all that stuff. But then I, from other artists, uh-huh. I hear that you, you can stay focused and still get by. So I'm just kind of wondering, like, are there just two open paths you can choose? I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, you would want to be able to draw everything. Do you, though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a personal taste, I guess. So, um, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you think that that's true? Um, like you have to draw everything. Like, are there examples of artists that don't draw everything and yet they, they do just fine in the industry? No. There aren't examples I, I guess, of artists that are no, specialized no. that only do one thing. And no, they don't no, no, no. There's fine? tons of artists. There's tons of artists. Uh huh. There you go. I was like, I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, like there's tons of artists who do like like a select few things, right? And they do just fine in an industry. So you agree with this premise? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. So then, what is Fang talking about? Right. Like, um, oops. I have to do this. Oh no, I made a mistake. Aha! Hacks, y'all. I f- I figured it out. <laughs> um, let's uh. Let's see what we can do here. All right. Um, Hold on. Sorry. I'm like trying to think what I'm trying to do here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, And this is something I always tell people to do, like experiments with, you know, which is like these thought experiments of like, is is it true? (laughs) You know, what these people claim. Right. And uh, especially when it comes to like this absolutism, right. Of like, you have to do it this way. Right. Like that's the only way. Feng Zhu, that's how he's been successful was by doing everything. I don't doubt this, you know, but this, this idea that like, that's the only way. Right. Um, Like that's the way to, to achieve this you know what i mean uh and if you don't do that you're gonna you're gonna fail is like absurd when if you just do uh, an art station search and just look at like your favorite artists you find that it's he's actually wrong it's actually the opposite is true in terms of uh what like what happens more often and the reality is there's more specialists you know than there are generalists you know, in, in our industry. In fact, I even say like, uh, I, I said this morning actually that someone asked something similar. I was like, you know, when you think about it like in this context of like a triathlon athlete, like the best, okay? Someone who's the best triathlon athlete ever, you know? Versus an Olympic person in any of those activities in the triathlon, right? The triathlon is running, swimming, and biking, right? So let's take Michael Phelps against this, the best triathlon athlete, right? Whoever that is. 
do you think Michael Phelps will lose or win against this person in swimming? Michael Phelps will probably win. Uh, most certainly will win. I'm not even – if I could bet money, I would bet money. You know? That's why uh, uh, Conor McGregor couldn't beat Floyd Mayweather. You know? Because <laughs> Floyd, Floyd Mayweather is – all about boxing. When you play it by the rules of boxing, he knows how to play, you know? And when you take these, like, uh, at least with, like, MMA, a lot of those disciplines are crossed, you know? But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that specialized artists tend to um, do just fine, you know? And, and like I said, I think it's actually the opposite is true that uh, you, you find that, what you call it, um, generalists are like far and few between, you know? Like, I don't think that that's like a real thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not even trying to say that being a generalist is impossible. I'm, I'm just saying that to think that that's uh, important overall over just having quality work is, is crazy to me. It is clearly a matter of having uh, not quality uh, or not, not like a quantity of different types of work, but just, just in general having a quality portfolio over all things. And like I said, just go to Art Station. I mean, we can even we can do this triathlon example with Feng Zhu, right? Let's, let's take one of his many skills because he's really great at a lot of different things, right? Mm-hmm. And then let's challenge it. Let's see. So Feng Zhu, Zhu character design. Okay. So let's take this character design sheet that he's done. I'm not sure how old this is, if it's recent or older, but this is something that he's done. At least it looks like it. I don't know if this is his. Let's make sure we're getting his. Let's make sure. I don't want to assume. Yeah, see, this is why we got to be careful. Some of this stuff could be student gallery. Uh, thing, shoe, portfolio. That might be a better way of doing it. Old school. He's got a Twitter, but that still might not be. Let's go to this blog. Now, I'm not sure how old these are. And they're not even loading. Let's see how his Twitter is in comparison. Yeah, see? He's like more of an educator these days, so it's hard to tell what's his stuff. Worth the investment risk? I don't know. Is it? I know these uh, illustrations are definitely his, but I don't know about his character designs. I'm trying to find them. He actually used to have a website where he just piled all his previous illustrations into one big page. I just don't know what happened to it. Maybe it's because he's a fraud. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Have um, you met Feng Zhu yet, Anthony? No, no. Um, trying to find.
Yeah, this one's still not loading, dude. Oh, here we go. There's an official website. Maybe that's where we needed to go this whole time. Um, but what I was going to do is like take one of his character designs and put it against, I don't know, one of mine where I'm more specialized, right? And just see the difference, you know? It's not to say that I am better artist. It is to say that I am incredibly competitive when it comes to character design you know yeah and uh, i i have that confidence i know that i would do very well you know um and if you take any of it like let's let's just do something else let's take one one uh one of the things that he's really good at that he has lots i know like lots of examples of this are his um for instance uh this illustration i, I know this is something that he's done Right. In fact, all these illustrations. This is the kind of stuff that is on his YouTube page. Right. Let's take like this image right here. Pretty good. I actually like it a lot. Okay. I'm not even going to say that this is um, bad. I'm saying, but when let's let's put it against something that could be competitive to it by like any number of other artists, right? Who their sole focus is just uh, environment design, right? Like this guy right here, yeah. he's really great. But let me try to find someone that's closer illustratively. A time is definitely a powerhouse. Let's not look at a time. Let's try to find, I mean, all of these are already doing it, but I'm trying to find. Okay, my good friend Raphael, or not Raphael, uh, Derek Zabroki, right? Like, just take a look at his breadth of work. And you see that it's pretty competitive, you know? Yeah, of course. But that's like all he kind of does. You know what I mean? Uh, if we take someone that's a little bit more fantastical, the one that I was about to pick on, but I didn't. Oh, dude. Uh, we're going to be started with Wojciech. Dude, Wojciech is super good. Right? He just makes, like, photos. Like, these look like photos. <laughs> you know? It's it's incredibly... How do you pronounce that? Wojciech. It's Polish. Wojciech. Okay. It's all spelled weird, but then pronounced weird. Yeah, um, that, that's another one I've been pronouncing woefully wrong. I do love his nobody. Whole nobody too. would have been mad at you. I think everybody has. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought you were saying void check. Like, what is that? Some kind of video game? No, I did say that, and that's how you pronounce his name, void check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We hold on. I, I must be tripping or something. V O I D. Uh, yeah. Space. Yeah. yeah. It's just that's not how it's spelled. <laughs> like yep. uh, it's just how it's pronounced. Yep. But like here, here's my point. Like this is very imaginative concepts. So let's be let's be competitive there. Let's not just do on quality alone. Let's also think of creatively and imaginative. Is there people that are highly competitive? And absolutely. So if I had to choose between Fang and this in the individual, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say they we're within my budget and I'm looking for an environment artist to do whimsical environments. You know, in my eyes, there is no, there is no contest. You know what I mean? Yeah. But is this guy doing all sorts of stuff? Is he doing characters, creatures, mix, like all that stuff? No, he's just all about environments. Now there might be vehicles there might be characters inside of these things, but it's not, the point like he put characters to make the environment look good not so not they're not the main part of the concept yeah you know? I understand. yeah he's putting vehicles because he's trying to uh, imply the scale of an environment or the the wonder of the environment this is like all he focuses on you know and he is highly skilled so to be able to do all of these things really really well is very unlikely 
and like i said if you just go to art station and just selectively just pick you know not even like uh, or sorry not uh, randomly pick not even like just be like highly selective uh and you just do like a dozen artists you'll find that more likely than not you would find artists who are uh on the other side of the, the the equation, which is that most people are specialized, and I highly give people. I, I always give advice of focusing on quality. Don't focus on any of the other, other nonsense. God. Don't get distracted with what people are saying to you. Focus on: Do you have the goods? You don't. Then what are you doing? Because even with the prem, uh, even with things premise of like you should have multiple stuff in your portfolio, the only problem is that he's wrong about, um, or he's not emphasizing that it doesn't matter if you have a lot of stuff if it's not good, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you're not going to be competing against a, a bunch of generalists. You're going to be competing against generalists and specialists. Yeah, this, this method works. It's just the problem is the profile, the depth of the design is not as good as I wanted it to be. Oh well. But I've, I've been like on a stylized kick. I was looking at, um, here, let me show you some stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a demo now to end up the class. I'm gonna do proper painting demo. <laughs> yeah, just show you guys a bit of me uh, on my own journeys. This is the kind of work that nobody would ever see. I keep it to myself, but you guys get to see. But that's what it looks like. I make this mistake. Uh, I'm not even going to finish it. It's accomplished as much as I needed it to do. That's usually how long I take. I take about an hour or so, right? Uh, I'll, I'll actually save it just for the sake of if I want to revisit it to see if I can t do some more um, experiments. You know what I mean? But that's it. And then I just save it, and tuck it away forever in a temporary folder. And I may never come to it unless I have to. Uh, reevaluate something and I was like I, I learned something a couple weeks ago what did I do and I just open it up and look at it you know what I mean I might have easily just forgotten uh, so I'm showing I'm going to show you guys a series of images just a second I'm just clicking on them so you guys can be like oh yeah that's pretty dope um, you just got to be patient with me just be patient be patient. So there's a few artists. Uh, and then there's like, there's this one artist. There's a very few who've done a bunch of stuff, cool stuff. And then there's like one artist that's kind of like embraced the style. Uh, and I don't see too many other people do it. And I'm just always curious to why. Maybe because it's hard. And when I think about that it's a challenge, it makes me want to double down on trying to do it. So this artist, uh, Mickey Benz, so you see this right here? Pretty cool painting, right? It's 3D, y'all. Dude. Oh. Yeah. And then there's like other examples. You know? So I'm just Freaking going. Dope. So I'm just going through the notions. I'm trying to figure this out, you know. It's the same artist that I showed you guys earlier, Mickey Benz. So from this perspective, it's super cool, illustrative, but as you guys will probably suspect, it's 3D, dude. Uh, I'm sorry, what is this, this artist's name again? How dare you? How dare you try to steal my references? This is my secret. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the same artist. And uh, jokes aside, I sent you a link to his sketch pad. You can just follow it from there. Uh, 
Uh, and what I think is, I just, what? Mickey Banks. Mickey Banks. Yeah, and I think I just need to like devote uh, a week or two of just doing this. But he does quite a few. He's he's not he's not a novice. Yeah. And I'm sure he's done even studies before these ones that really got popular, what he's known for. You know? <laughs> Brienne of Tarth. That's so cool. Um, this one's my favorite one of his. Look at this. Oh my God, it's beautiful. It's nice. beautiful. No, I didn't this make that. Get out of here, Delilah. Oh my god, my daughter's just like, oh, did you make that? I wish. So nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm Taking working on it, Lila. Here, hold on. I made this one. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, it's good from this angle. No. It's just when you turn it. It looks the best. It looks <laughs> the best. <laughs> It does look like savage. Nice. He's not wrong. <laughs> I, agree, I agree with her. Um, but that's the yeah. journey, you know. That's the way it works, right? I'm on my journey. You know, like look at this one. This is super cute. It's adorable. Um, but there's like this whole underground of just like these beautiful stylized. Ooh, someone took my thing. They thought it was good enough to put in their their folder. I appreciate that. How long ago was this? Yeah, see, this is, but this is probably my second or third real attempt at stylized 3D. Uh, this was this wasn't too long ago, three months ago. Uh, I can show you my other attempt, uh, but when I see uh, these re uh, references, it gets me. Oh, this one's sick. Yo, this one's tight. Hold on. Oh, dude, mm. I, I'm into this one. This one's amazing. Okay, cool. Yes, I'm going to follow you. <laughs> yes, I need to add you to my style folder. Um, yeah, I'm into that one. That's great. Um, but there's like stuff like this and this. This one's cool. I've never seen that one before. There's one in here that I saw that I know I have as reference, and I love it. Um, this is cool, man. People Nosferatu. Are, that's that's really rad, man. Oh, man, I love this stuff. But you don't see enough people doing it, and I'm getting really good at 3D in terms of just navigating and creating. Uh, I'm just not combining my painting skills in 3D in the best way yet. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to. I'm in the middle of doing it. You know, you just got to give it time, right? But you saw, like, I did, did that garbage example. Even my daughter is like, yeah, it's garbage. Um, you know, which is understandable because it, I don't think it is good either. But it's not supposed to be. I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, look how good I am, everybody. Right? That's not the goal of it. I'm trying to learn. You know what I mean? And I made three or four mistakes while I was making it. And I learned from those mistakes. I'm uh, one step closer you know, I'm one step closer to um, something that I, I I'll feel comfortable will be good, you know. And like I said, I've only had a couple images that I've done that I actually felt were good that I actually shared. Now here's the one I was looking for. Look at this. How cool is that? That is red. Let's send you guys this one. And I'm like, we need more games and more projects to look like that. You know what I mean? Look at this yeah. one. It's super cool. But it's hard to do. I'm and but I feel like I have enough of the technical abilities. I just gotta start combining these abilities. You know what I mean? Um, like I know how to program, right? I know how to make a game. I know how to, uh, paint really well. I know 3d relatively well. It's like, there's a chance that I can be one of these like savant creators that can just make something 
from zero to 100. There's only a couple other things missing, which is music, but I was originally a musician, so I don't feel like uh, I'm completely inept at that. But that's pretty that's, cool, too. That's uh, the professional, right? Yes. Look at this. Delilah, yeah. what do you think about this? Okay. I'm okay with that. Let me oh, that is really nice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Lila. <laughs> 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 Whoa. Perfect reaction. I should probably start simpler. I should just do something like this and just focus on the modeling skills. This is super cool. God, I love the colors on this one. Hey, you stay out of this. Only I can speak. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me show you something that really kind of, because uh, I've been uh, doing more and more stylized stuff. Oh my gosh, get out of here. When it's just the painting, it's, it's okay. <laughs> so when it jumps into 3D, that's when it becomes a, a hot, hot mess. But uh, I'm sorry that I have poisoned your guys' eyes with this garbage. <laughs> um, and my daughter doesn't like the teeth, though. But you know what? My daughter doesn't know anything. I do know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything you don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. What's 125 times 2,361? You have five seconds. That's not even because close. I didn't say. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so I was so, watching this. So here is the 3D model. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? And that's for the game Hades. Have you guys seen Hades? I have a yeah. friend that won't stop talking about it. Dude, it's great. It's a great game. Look at that. Look at this. That looks really, really good. Well, if you look at the game, man. Yeah, the game looks sick. Like, the game is so beautiful. I was playing it, and I was just like, damn, G. Hold on, let's, let's stop the frame. So this is a still from the game. Look at that, G. Look at this. So good, man. Looks like a looks like a comic. If you're playing wow. a comic, same folks who did like Bastion and uh, what was the other? Uh, they did uh, Transistor, I think it was called. And then there Transistor, was Transistor. Yeah. Yeah. And then Moon, they did Moonlighter. Yeah. And then they did one other game uh, that also was beautiful, but I don't think it was like as fun. Wow. And so they went back to their roots. You know, Anthony, a really good example of this, Cuphead. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example. But anyway, moral of the story here is that that's how, that's like my journey. You just saw a little bit of it, you know, because normally you guys see me just demo like, like stuff that I'm clearly good at, which is painting in general, right? So I'm like quickly in like the next 20, 30 minutes for you guys paint a thing to answer, and as I'm answering more questions but you know my goal oh yeah I was going to show you my other test that I did that I was like this ain't half bad because I've done a couple 3D stuff right so I've done like you know your traditional PBR 3D and it's actually relatively easier to do I remember I did this character it took me about a week a lot of growing pains, learned a lot. But like uh, this right here. Oh, hell yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. Oh. This, ain't, this ain't so bad. It's, it's like, it's also pretty retro, which I also kind of like. <laughs> it's like um, it's very, like, very like old school. Yeah. Very like, like it, poly. On the, on the good side of PS2. Yeah, it's like as if 
PS there was never a PS3 and it just we just kept on doing games like this. Like, what, <laughs> what would that look like? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like into it, dude. I'm like, yeah, I should just keep exploring stuff like this. And and I just need to get better at it. So this is like the second model that I made, and then the or the first model I made that was like actually painted. You know, and then I had the second character model, one that you guys saw, which is more more charming in terms of its aesthetic. Uh, but then I, you know, I got back into like just 3D, 3D, 3D. But I was like, I don't know, man. I'm like, I don't know if like I want to keep committing to this type of stuff. As cool as it looks, I just started, I just feel like it's not as is game changer as like what I've been seeing on the, like the example I just sent to you guys. And I was like, I like what's, what's really alluring to me is that it really requires the people who are making these assets to not just be good 3d modelers. Right. But like good artists. And that is not as easy to do. Right. You can't like automate that as much as you would try, like to try, you know, um, without having some artistic skill. Don't worry, you can still automate some of it. Let me show you an example. Um, and I was really impressed by it. I was like, oh, that's a great way to like maybe just do a bunch of props, but like make, I can focus my attention on the characters. I'll show you guys. Oh, it is style tech. There's a bunch of stuff in this folder. Uh, but this guy was talking about like making a stu Studio Ghibli looking object. And this is all procedurally generated. Oh, wow. Uh, the frog specifically. Yeah, and he just goes through how he just uses different noise materials. And it's really clever. And he ultimately makes it. And he, he said, you can re keep reapplying this onto different objects. And it just makes cool looking stuff. I was like, that's pretty cool. It's and incredible. then there's, yeah, and then I was looking at like a um, long time ago. Like, there's some just like really beautiful looking environments. Yeah, look at that. That's super cool. That's got some realistic lighting though, but you get the point. Um, and then there is like, uh, oh, I'm not sure why I don't have it here. That I did. But just more of like this beautiful environments, beautifully stylized. I wonder if I have. It also reminds me of Ori in the Blind Forest. Ori yeah, the, man. The Wasp. Yeah. That That's game right. is a. Is a piece of art man yeah and it doesn't age it lives forever right that's kind of the thing that i'm into ue4 stylized environment let me see if i can makes me miss okami oh here we go oh okami was awesome that one also age as well okay check this out this is like done in unreal engine too it's super cool it's nuts yeah uh, i was reading how this person did like these shadows because these are all paintings right mm -hmm. and they just created a uh a texture and then what they did is they just um have the uv uh they would have a moving texture onto the UV and it would just be a shadow that oh. goes over it. Super close. Gotcha. So it's, not actual, it's not actual light. It's a moving texture over the object. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Oh. Smart. Super close. Yeah. Huh. And then he was just using like wiggle uh, vertex movement on the actual stuff here too. It's all in the shade. It's all clever material use. And I'm just like, Dude, I'm like, I've been practicing the wrong stuff. It's realism stuff. It's like hot <laughs> garbage, man. I just need to become a 
like a true digital painter. Not to say that my style should be like very cartoony, but if I was to kind of maintain my painting aesthetic, like think of it more like bringing to life a Frazetta painting, you know, where the style of a Frazetta painting isn't realistic, but there's like a lot of juicy colors and values. And people always think about like, wouldn't it be great? And But nobody can because for one, the coordination alone to orchestrate that is incredibly challenging. Uh, but even then, like you'd need everybody to be skilled enough to actually execute, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. There's like those Guilty Gear games and that Dragon Ball Z game that looks like those. I was just animation. about to say Arxis games. Yeah. And they, uh, I watched their talks and they pretty much were like, listen, we're actually not doing anything technically crazy. Um, like the stuff that we're doing, and this is like a talk like three or four years ago. And when he said this, this is three or four years ago, he says, we could have done this three or four years ago. So like even six or seven years ago, <laughs> you know, from the time I was watching this video, he was basically saying when they were doing it, the tech existed for years, way before they even began. And he was saying the reason why we can do this is because um, we, we lean heavy onto the artists and we spend a lot of time uh, in tech art and creating tools to allow the artists to make art. Uh, they didn't like reinvent new technologies. They just made it more accessible for artists to do cool stuff. If that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. they, they worked on workflow, not so much um, new tech, right? They worked on process, not so much new technologies, right? Um, like that's kind of how I work, right? Like I use, I, I, my main abilities are focused mostly on process, not like me using any new technology. When new technologies come out, I take advantage of them, but I can paint this in MS Paint. You know what I mean? It might not be as glorious and or as quick, but if you give me enough time, I could probably make it as glorious and maybe as quick, you know? Sure. Like all I need is the ability to change my brush uh, size and the color of my brush, but even not that, I don't even need to change the size, just be able to change the color of my brush. And I should be able to do decent work, you know? And I also paint very graphically. I can make designs look good without it with like detailed lighting, just do everything in like this ambient lighting, you know? And just focus on the paint strokes to define the forms and graphic read to design define the design. You know, I could totally, totally uh, make a whole project. Uh, on my own. It's just going to take me fucking forever, probably. This <laughs> is so like it's just piece by piece, but I've never felt so uh, so confident with my 3D skills until just up uh, up until recently that I'm just like, oh man, I should just get in there. I'm trying to do it in a way where I can design the 3D thing at the same time as the painting. That makes sense. But like, I don't know if I can yet. Cause like, I, like I can just like quickly come up with images like this, like in 2D, but I, it might be that I have to just first, just concept it, you know, really loosely in 2D, just kind of like what I'm doing here. Like actually follow a proper 3D development pipeline like I'm just getting way too ahead of myself. And it, it might be the, the time, Mauricio, where I take my own advice and slow down and just simplify the process, stop overthinking it. And I'm speaking to you, Mauricio, specifically, because this is advice I give to you. And I'm like, I'm like potentially projecting that I'm doing the same, I'm making the same mistake with this new process. And I'm almost convinced I am now, now that I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm hearing myself say it, I'm like, oh yeah, dude, what the hell? 
<laughs> I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm expecting it to be dope so quickly. I'm like, why don't I just take it slow? Like, we'll we'll do a quick concept. Like, this will be it, and then I'll just model this out, and then paint on top of it again. It's okay, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, it seems like, and I know in my inner inner AJ is like, but bro, you can just you can come up with the concept so quickly. It's like, I know, but if I want to truly ac accomplish these goals, I just need to try, bro. <laughs> you know, I just need to try. There are some softwares that are, that are currently in development that actually work a lot in transforming some 2D photo image into a 3D model. Well, I'll just, I'll just paste it. Uh, some that I saw in the chat for you for you guys to see. Put it yeah, in the live Skype. Kitty. I think I have the link to the uh, software. Let me. Yeah, that, that technology is only going to get better. For sure. And it can abbreviate a lot of these steps that you just mentioned, Anthony. Yeah, but we're not there yet, but I trust that we will be. I agree with you. And then it's then it's truly GG. <laughs> it's like, what were you guys, all these three artists doing? They're wasting their time. <laughs> they should have just known the future was catching up to them. I just pasted pasted uh, one of these softwares on the chat for you guys. If you have the curiosity later to see it, oh what? Yeah, man. Oh, that wait, thing, that thing is that thing is walking. Wait, it's you guys have a link to happened. this tool? Well, here's the paper. Oh, wait, what? Make sure that your runtime is Python 3 with GPU so ready to go. No fix settings, however, it's like import. And keep in mind that the software runs with only one photo. It, it, it doesn't even have the the backs or the side view. I, I don't think I can get away with my image. I think it's, it's a AI uh, information based off of real people. Yeah, because it's, if it's machine learning, it's it had something to learn from, and if it if I just feed it this, I don't know how it's going to react. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you know Maybe I mean? you should you, you should just get rid of one of the pair of arms. Never, how dare you? For it to see as a human figure. <laughs> Could you imagine though, if I just had like. <laughs> convert to 3D but, and it just did. <laughs> so. But it's definitely going to happen, Anthony. And, and then our generation will will live to see it. And we'll be the ones to complain about it, right? We'll be like, yeah. back in my day, we'll we used to... be the first ones to complain as well. Yeah, <laughs> we were the, back in my day, we used to model all of our things by hand. I, I will be one of these uh, uh, bad-mooded fellows. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Don't say that. Well, I mean, you're working on your drawing skills, so eventually you'd be like, I got ahead of it, dude. And um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm you, working so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 I'm, giving, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you two years and then we're gonna be replaced by robots, so you better hurry up. Um, but like, um, but even like the drawings will be replaced. <laughs> and so like, 
it'll just be completely AI generated everything, even the drawing, the original drawing is gonna be 3D. Like it's I, like if I really if you, hope not, Sam. Right, I'm almost certain it will happen. I just don't know when. I predicted 2025. So we're or no no 2022, because I said this about five or three to four years ago, and I said it was gonna take five years. So 2022 is when we're gonna see some real sketch stuff, <laughs> you know, where there's gonna be some ethical questions about licensing a style because essentially like something like my work because there's so much of it but you could totally have a machine learning algorithm learn my style right there's so much to learn from you know even including my tutorials and me actually live painting you know you could totally just replicate me as like a as an ai bot There's like a there's a Twitter that uses AI machine learning to create photos of people that don't exist, but based on photos it finds online. I've and heard it's of like, that. yeah, it, it's crazy because like the the faces look fantastic. They look like photos of real people, but because the AI is only programmed to understand faces, mm -hmm. everything outside their face is a little bit messed up. So there's always like the best friend behind the face that looks like they're made out of skin or like the, <laughs> the flesh backpack. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's like, it's like we're at photographs. We're getting so good at the faces, but everything you don't, you have to program everything in, right? Like if you wanted an AI that would like generate drawings in Anthony style, you need to like get the AI to understand what, the style even is first no that's not how it works at all um so you're you're thinking of ai uh as like some sort of thing that a programmer would have to program like and understand fundamental stuff like style genre right um mm -hmm. so machine learning how machine learning works is you, you just feed it a bunch of information and then you just tell it if it's got it right or not and then uh, you just create a mechanism so that you can correct for itself. And then all the, all you do is just let it learn. That's why you call it machine learning. And then eventually after like millions and millions of iterations, or in this case, they usually do thousands, thousands and thousands of iterations. Uh, the machine learning algorithm figures it out. And what ends up happening is that, and this is something that a lot of these like scientists will say, like these data scientists will get to is like, we have a preconceived notion of how things should work but a machine learning algorithm doesn't care about that stuff. It only cares about the ultimate result, right? It may mm -hmm. circumvent human nature because it feels like it's unnecessary. So there was a good example when they did this with the deep AI for uh, StarCraft and the, the AI was doing a strategy like that's like super weird at the early meta, right? They were like, why is it doing that? Like it's never been seen by any pro player at, at any level. And even when the commentator, uh, commentators were watching and talking about it, they're like, this is like a real weird, right? Like there's no way he's gonna win if he's doing this, he's overextending whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. But then it started just raffle stopping people. And then they, they started to reflect backwards as like, oh, like because of that, they were able to do this like later in the game, right? But it's not intuitive, it's like super, unintuitive but the ai doesn't mm. care about intuition the ai is like this is how i'm going to win because yeah. i've played literally thousands and thousands of games and the ones that i was most successful this is the play that i did you know mm -hmm. and and then that's when it started just raffle stomping the players the players couldn't beat it <clears throat> and then uh interestingly the players started doing that same strategy that the ai did because they, they dissected it while it was working so well, you know? And what, mm -hmm. what that assimilates is like when a player sees another unconventional player doing something unconventional and being like adapting to it, right? Uh, AI, uh, specifically machine learning, does that all the time. It's always doing something that doesn't seem intuitive. That's kind of the point. It's like circumventing generations of people who can 
like we have one human spawn that happens to think a little bit different than all of us and takes all the information that we all had access to and just sees it differently you know usually it takes generation after generation of humans to like, like listen like that happen right i think we're going to need a couple more generations to be honest like some people believe the earth is flat but you get my point right <laughs> like the ai <laughs> the ai doesn't do that like ai just like gets it right away um yeah because like uh i think some other person was saying like they're explaining it in a way that's like cr- super profound it's like um the the value of deep machine learning is not just that it can do stuff cool it can show us new innovative ways to get started you know instead of yeah. like like thinking like going through conventional ways of thinking like it can make us think differently and that uh, example of starcraft was a, was a perfect example of this so like when we look at painting like it would be cool to see it do a painting like an ai right mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be interesting to see if it does something like this like it does like this kind of weird like like let's just say it did something like this right and it just makes no sense but then it ends up looking like this and someone like me looks at that and says wait what and i can be like oh you know maybe the power of doing this way was that they were just it, it was just straight up just trying to uh create where the, all the landmarks are and then yeah. it'll just connect it you know yeah it could do that or or it can do the opposite which would be the worst case scenario for someone like me it just fucking i robots it and just <laughs> scan lines <laughs> you know yeah and, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, there's no way I can dissect that. The machine's got me beat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like, I mean, I could try to do a whole painting like that, where it's like every line is deliberate. I've seen people do this. There's, there's this one person who does this on YouTube, right? And it's like, it's just so slow. And you have to have a photo to be able to copy, <laughs> you know? So you can kind of follow along. It's just a very complicated puzzle at that point, you know? But to con- construct something completely new, like I think my machine learning algorithm that's in my brain has figured it out, you know? I am almost instantaneous, right? I Like 10 to 15 minutes, I can get something pretty good, <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. it's nothing to laugh at. But it's, uh, but that's how you should think about machine learning. Machine learning, it's not about like, we got to teach it principled ideas before we can even get started. That's like human learning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like that's how I teach you, you guys. Like you guys need to learn these principle stuff. Machine learning is just like skips anatomy. This is, I don't need to know anatomy. Like this is what creatures look like, bam. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> like I, don't, I don't need any of this nonsense like lighting dude i don't care about that stuff i don't need to know the fundamentals of the lighting and so yeah like um the the better the machine learning algorithm like so this is why i don't think it can it, it will be able to like straight up take styles yet until a couple more years because it needs information to steal from there's already art uh, a, a website called Art Breeder that does this, but it's still kind of weird, you know, mm-hmm. um, because it, it it is really hard because it's still very subjective. Uh, what they would need is like someone like myself, who's like, like because human, realistic humans, there's so so much more photos and data that you can just go for days, you know, but just having like art style, like you have to have somebody collect like first know what that means and how to like collect that data and how to organize that data and then categorize different types of art styles and categorize different types of genres, you know, like Mm -hmm. that, once that has been done and then you will have your tool that says make concept art. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind because all I am is just a collection of experiences from collecting data over the many years, right? Uh, and AI can do that, no problem. It's just the problem is the programmers may not know how to create uh, a, a good learning model for it, you know? Uh, 
Not yet, that is. Because I think at some point, uh, programming will be really intuitive that even like artists can program and make their own machine learning algorithms, right? Someone like yeah. who's smart like I, uh, myself when it comes to art and creativity. And they're like, this is how you can build AI. You can feed it whatever you want. And I'm like, oh, can I now? <laughs> and then I'll just take all my own images and teach it just to be me. And I'll make my own <laughs> concept art in like literally seconds. <laughs> and then even if it gave me like a, like a really garbage looking sketch, I'll be like, I can work with this. You know, like it's, it saved me. Yeah. It saved me 15 minutes to get started, right? Now I can just render it a little bit better, <laughs> you know? Like imagine if it gave me something like this. Like if I just press the button, I was like, oh, it's tight. And then I just go here <laughs> and I just like to start working on it. <laughs> it'll, be real, it'll be real surreal, but it'll be super cool. And then I'll be charging my clients like so much. I'll be like, oh, dude, like freaking $2,000 daily rate. I can give you 20 thumbnails, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> like in 30 I think minutes it, i think it's <laughs> it's most i think it's most probable that it, it will be the other way around uh, you you will launch a series of broad strokes in the in the canvas and the ai will probably enhance it with details a lot faster for you i that think maybe cool that that, yeah. that 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 could be one way that yeah it you're right there's like there's there's evidence that that can happen too yeah Totally. Either way, I'm going to be embracing it. That's why I'm going heavily more in like style and novelty, because even if these things exist, there will still be like, there are still people who like to go camping. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. they like, they don't necessarily want to live in technology. They, they, they still want to have access to like novelty and like handcrafted things. Right. There's still value there. I just got to have that ability, you know? I'm going to have to become a carpenter, make tables. But anyway, is there any last question before I send you guys out into the world? Um. Let's, let's check out this art reader program while you guys are thinking. I think I don't have one because you have to log in. And I don't want to log in. <laughs> All right, here you go. Start. All right, I'll log in. I'll use Google. I trust Google will keep me safe. All right, let's make concept art, guys. All right. Your mom. That's the name of the artist, your mom. <laughs> okay, let's create general portraits, characters. Let's do it. Oh, man, that's pretty tight. It's not too bad. Then create a method. Yeah, let's do female. Click the save. Can I select parents? Find, enter, or find an image. Are you, uh, are you subscribed to this, Anthony? Enter an art like, breeder URL. What does this mean? Or find an image. I can't put my own art breeder. I would love to see if I can put my own concept to see if it's already doing it. Trending, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do this one. This looks like it fits in my style. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's do this. Let's do that. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, but how do I like, how do I like get started though? Okay, I guess I just gotta click on this. Let's see. <laughs> That's cool. More human or non human? More armor? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's put a coat on it. No coat. 
Make it more ninja? Yeah, more ninja. That's not a ninja, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How's that negative ninja? <laughs> <laughs> so from what I'm understanding is that somebody would have had to actually design oh, each the of these fuck? individual parts. No, it's just uh, it's 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 like what I said. It's just learn from millions of sourced images of art. Interesting. And, it, and it's just made this more female. I know there's a way you can upload images. I've tried this before, but like if you're not subscribed, you can't put in more than like three photos at a time per account. But there's a way to do it. I just can't remember how. <laughs> and I can just keep messing with it. All right. So, so if I had to critique this, if this is one of your guys' work, you submitted it to me, I'd be like, well, first of all, your proportions are off. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm telling you, dude. If I was there in the, the meeting when they were designing this tool, I could have told them. It's like there's that's, just some that's fundamentals. Robot pencil, that's robot pencil punchline. First of all, the proportions are off. <laughs> yeah, it's like always the thing, and it's even this freaking machine learning algorithm <laughs> can't get the proportions right. Like, why? Why do all these artists, even the robot artists, not just study their fundamentals? <laughs> <laughs> like, when will they learn? But this is like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to build a whole portfolio. I, I should make this a YouTube video. This would be a great YouTube video. Uh, like build a whole portfolio. Like just make a phantom artist and just build a whole portfolio where the the beginning of my art was that of a machine learning algorithm, <laughs> right? Cause I can I can make this look good. Like that's the part that just like with uh, what you call it. Um, um, oh, these shins are really small. That's the same thing with uh, what you call it. Uh, when you look at uh, what, what am I going with this? Oh yeah, like photo bashing or even three D. You know that it's not as simple as just like using photos and then now it looks good, right? Like you do actually have to have some ability to make those photos work with your image, you know? And I think machine learning algorithm, uh, even at its early stages, like I think it's already usable, but it's not enough. Like it's probably good to give like some thumbnails. I'm actually gonna see if I can kind of create a portfolio that has a little bit more genre There's actually AI too that um, this looks like kind of like Captain Falco. Um, there's actually AI too that exists that can sharpen noisy images. So it's like if I just use all these AI tools, aside from like my hand painting parts, but just like just show like AI bashing, <laughs> it's like a new painting process. And then people will be like, oh, dude, I'm all about AI bashing, dude. Like anything but cheat and get jobs. You know what? I have this like um, freelance gig. I wonder if I can do it. You know? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm like, I'm like actually curious, specifically the portraits. Portraits are one of those things I really don't worry about because there's so many ways to do a face, uh, including using photo bash te uh, techniques. And there's just so many ways to draw a face. I don't really concern myself. I focus mostly on larger designs. All right, time to make this make this my concept. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, 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 da. Pirates? Nope. Gladiator. Same composer. And it's the same melody. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah, that's why you were right. Oh no! <laughs> it didn't like my. Uh, <laughs> it didn't like oh. my AI uh, <laughs> catastrophe there. Oh man! And I didn't save the other painting. Oh well. Hopefully, it will, it will, it will recover it. The the art gods are not happy. That's why <laughs> they're like, "How dare you play God?" <laughs> Yeah, see, it did fine. We recovered it. Great. Um, I was gone long enough, so I figured it would. That's the second time we crashed today. It's actually normally never crashes. So there must be something going on. Photoshop's like the new update or something. And you go check. Oh, what the? I put too many zeros. Yeah, I better be careful, man. Um, all right. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go oh. take the dog out. Um, but it was good talking with you guys. Good Q and A. We're gonna have another class. We'll have our final Q and A session then, as well as uh, the final review of you guys' work. I'll talk to you guys then. You guys have a great weekend uh, and be safe. Appreciate you guys. Cheers. Yep. Cool. Good night. Cheers. Have a good weekend. Good night. Absolutely. Cheers, friends. And uh, if I see art breeder work by next class, <laughs> I won't be mad. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.